Hi guys, I have summarised this very important dog article for you. It's the myocardial infarction and pregnancy. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Okay, let's get started. Cardiovascular disease complicates 0.2 to 4% of all pregnancies. It's the leading cause of maternal death since 2000. Majority of maternal deaths in the UK from acquired heart disease and the last Centre for Maternal and Child Inquiries report noted that 11 maternal deaths um, resulted from myocardial infarction, mostly related to ischemic heart disease. It's a rare event in childbearing age. In pregnancy, the relative risk is approximately three to four times higher. The UK, the UK OS um, incidence um, non-fatal antenatal acute MI as 0.7 cases per 100,000 maternities in 2005-2010. Significant changes in pregnancy affect the cardiovascular system and increase myocardial oxygen demand. Um, as early as six weeks of gestation, there's an increase in plasma volume and reduction in peripheral vascular resistance um, occurs because of activation of the renin um, angiotensin system and mild reduction of the plasma atrial natriuretic peptide levels. Increase in blood volume continues until, until it plateaus uh, about, about 240 to 150% at around 32 weeks compared with a non-pregnant patient. The cardiac output increases steadily until 25 weeks gestation, initially secondary to increase in stroke volume and later because of increase in maternal heart, heart rate. During labour and delivery, further hemodynamic changes occur. The heart rate and blood pressure increases significantly as, re as a result of pain, anxiety and uterine contractions. The increase in heart rate is similar to that observed during moderate to heavy physical exercise. Cardiac output increases by 50% with each contraction. About 300 to 400 mil mils of blood is transferred from the uterus into the circulation with each contraction. In the active phase of second stage in labour, the Valsalva manoeuvre results in large variations in the central venous pressures. The completion of the third stage of labour results in approximately 500 ml uterine blood being returned to the maternal circulation, with associated increase in ventricular preload, cardiac output and central venous pressure. Approximately 48 hours a 48 hours after delivery, diuresis and natriuresis start, um, return of cardiac output, blood volume and peripheral resistance to the pre-pregnancy state occurring over the course of 4 to 12 weeks. There's increased procoagulants and reduced levels of natural anticoagulants during pregnancy, um, inducing a hypercoagulable state, reducing intrapartum blood loss. Uh, increase and there's an also increased risk of thromboembolism. Levels of fibrinogen factors 7, 8 and 10 and non Willebrand's factor increase in pregnancy and contribute to a procoagulant state. During pregnancy, the natural anticoagulants decrease as a result of low levels of functional protein S secondary to increased levels of its binding protein. The, com the, com the, the complement component C4B and increased levels of plasmogen, plasminogen activator inhibitor type 1. Changes in coagulation system do not return to pre-pregnancy levels until more than eight weeks postpartum. Compared with risk during pregnancy, risk of thrombosis is even higher after delivery. So pathophysiology of acute myocardial infarction. So acute myocardial infarction is characterized by presence of myocardial necrosis consistent with myocardial ischemia. Classified on ECG findings as uh, non-ST elevated MI and ST elevated MI. Both types share a common pathophysiology. The most, most common underlying cause is the atherosclerosis, uh, a process of plaque formation in arteries which continues throughout life. Diabetes and smoking damage the endothelium. Um, dysfunction of injured endothelium leads to inflammation of the underlying plaque, 
which can fissure or rupture. The ruptured plaque is prothrombotic, causing platelet activation and aggregation, as well as activation of the coagulation cascade. This process um, this progresses to thrombus formation and causes myocardial ischemia. Severity of plaque rupture, degree of inflammation and coagulability state of the patient will influence progression of thrombus formation. Partial occlusion of a vessel with thrombus causes findings consistent with uh, non-STEMI, while total occlusion of the vessel is present as, um, as STEMI. Cardiovascular changes in pregnancy significantly increase myocardial oxygen demand. Physiological anemia of pregnancy, hypocoagulability, and decrease in diastolic blood pressure may reduce the myocardial oxygen supply and contribute to the aggravation of myocardial ischemia, where the coronary, coronary arterial blood supply is already compromised. Increased cardiac output in the immediate postpartum period results from decompression of the inferior vena cava and transfer of blood from the contracted uterus and makes peripartum a period of particularly high risk. 50% of acute myocardial infection occurs in the peripartum period. Coronary thrombi and dissection occur more frequently in the peripartum period than before delivery. This may be explained by the, by the physiological changes at this time, leading to increased strain on the coronary vessels, resulting in greater uh, risk of dissection. Risk of acute myocardial infection is 30 times higher over age of 40 years than aged less than 20 years. 64% of women who died of cardiac disease were overweight or obese. Dyslipidemia may be worsened because the high uh, density um, lipoprotein um, cholesterol is significantly re decreased during pregnancy. However, there's no significant change in LDL cholesterol or triglyceride levels in pregnancy. AMI, so acute myocardial infarction in pregnancy, risk factors such as preeclampsia, eclampsia, thrombophilia, um, postpartum infections, blood transfusion, migraine headaches, and multiparity. Whether multiparity is direct relation to uh, acute my myocardial infarction or advancing maternal age or other risk factors associated with multiparity that play a role that needs all to be established. Causes of acute myocardial infection in pregnancy, atherosclerosis or non-atherosclerotic coronary artery dissection, thrombosis and coronary artery spasm. Coronary artery dissection is a cause of acute myocardial infarction in pregnant women with no cardiovascular risk factors. Pathophysiology is an excess of prog progesterone leading to biochemical and structural changes in the vessel wall. Other suggestions like association with lytic action of the prote proteases released from the eosinophils and lack of um, prostacycline synthesis stimulating plasma factor and elevated lipoprotein. Risk of coronary artery dissection is highest in the third trimester and up to three months postpartum. Physiological changes at this time lead to increased strain on the coronary vessels, which may explain the greater risk of dissection. In majority of the cases, 80%, the left anterior descending coronary artery is affected and cause extensive acute myocardial infarction with an associated mortality of 30 to 40%. Another reason of acute myocardial infarction presentation in women uh, without underlying atherosclerosis is coronary artery thrombosis. Reported incidence is 8 to 14 percent. Um, the thrombophilic state of pregnancy may contribute to this pathology or hereditary thrombosis um, can be manifested um, at, at this time. Um, Pregnant women can have acute myocardial infarction. Coronary vessels um, can be normal on the angiogram. Two mechanisms like transient coronary spasm due to enhanced vascular reactivity to angiotensin II and noradrenaline and endothelial dysfunction or renin release and angiotensin production secondary to uh, compromised uterine perfusion in the supine position. Drugs in pregnancy like uh, terbutaline, uh, um, ergotamine and bromocryptine can induce a continuous coronary vessel spasms. Other causes of acute myocardial infarction in pregnancy include cocaine use, uh, vasculitis, such as Kawasaki disease, collagen vascular disease, amniotic fluid em embolism, and pheochromocytoma. Diagnosis of acute MI um, can be difficult, symptoms and signs uh, 
can be normal manifestations of pregnancy or be masked during labour. It can lead to delay in diagnosis. The diagnostic criteria of acute myocardial infarction are same as for non-pregnant patients. In addition, chest pain, typical features of pregnancy such as epigastric pain, vomiting or dizziness, particularly in the presence of known acute, acute myocardial infarction risk factors should be investigated. Investigations like ECG, uh, markers of cardiac damage, uh, blood uh, blood cardiac uh, markers. Um, so you've got your troponin I and troponin T. Um, echo and coronary angiography are the investigations of choice. Prompt uh, rest restoration of blood flow uh, limits myocardial damage and reduces mortality. Um, low index of suspicion of acute myocardial infarction and reassurance regarding safety of interventions will allow for early um, initiation of treatment and prevention of inappropriate delays. Um, reperfusion therapy, so for STEMI, decisions regarding reperfusion therapy, um, cardiologists should be involved and are influenced by the local factors with, with STEMI coronary um, angiography and primary percutaneous coronary intervention is treatment of choice. Um, the European Society of Cardiology recommends use of bare metal stents rather than drug uh, eluting stents because of lack of safety uh, data for the latter. Even in pregnancy, thrombolysis is su suitable alternative if a significant delay is expected in accessing uh, PPCI. The Thrombolytic agent of choice is IV tissue plasminogen activator and has benefit of not crossing the placenta. However, its associated risk of maternal hemorrhage is 8% and can lead to fetal compromise. With non-STEMI, the first-line uh, antiplatelet drug treatment um, is aimed at preventing further thrombus formation, facilitating clot dissolution and increasing blood flow to the my myocardium. Coronary angiography uh, with view of revascularization by stenting is considered if symptoms of coronary ischemia continue despite medical treatment or in the presence of hemodynamic inst instability. Patients whose symptoms settle on medical treatment but have high risk features may also be considered for angiography following a discussion of risks and benefits at a MDT meeting. Medical management uh, involves treatment and prevention of further coronary artery events. Aspirin is first line for non-pregnant and in prevention of subsequent uh, cardiovascular events. Low-dose aspirin um, is commenced in pregnant women. The CLASP trial uh, in pregnancy study confirmed the safety of low-dose aspirin in pregnancy. Low molecular weight heparin and unfractionated heparin is safe to be used in pregnancy, but anticoagulants should be stopped 24 hours prior to commencing induction of labor. They do not cross the placenta. So nitrates, labetalol, uh, nifedipine are all safe to be used in pregnancy. Um, if indicated, for example, after stenting, antiplatelet uh, therapy like clopidogrel can be used in pregnancy for a limited uh, short duration. ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers are contraindicated in pregnancy. Statins are not recommended in pregnancy. Pregnant women should be cared for in a high dependency and intensive care unit uh, with uh, provision for fetal monitoring. Timing and mode of delivery uh, with acute myocardial infarction uh, should be a collaborative approach so with including the cardiologist, obstetric physician, obstetrician and obstetric anaesthetist and neonatologist. Intervention, so it should be individualized based on maternal cardiac status and gestation age. If the risk of preterm delivery, maternal steroids uh, should be administered at the earliest opportunity. If possible, delay delivery should be delayed two to three weeks following um, acute myocardial infarction because of increased risk of maternal mortality during this time. Delivery should take place in high-risk obstetric units with intensive care uh, expertise, vaginal or elective uh, caesarean uh, section um, can be can be uh, can can be undertaken based on obstetric and maternal factors. Um, and it's important to know that neither method of delivery is associated with high mortality. Vaginal delivery is associated with lower risk of vaginal blood loss, infection and thromboembolism, while elective serian section avoids the hemodynamic fluctuation associated with labor and allows for a timely delivery with all appropriate multidisciplinary team members present. 
Timing of vaginal delivery, uh, like long labor, negatively influences myocardial workload with high increase in preload from uterine contractions. If vaginal delivery is attempted, an epidural analgesia is recommended to reduce pain. Um, labor in left lateral position is recommended. Um, after delivery, maternal monitoring in HTU, ITU for at least 24 to 48 hours. Prevention of or treatment of uh, ischemia during delivery, IVO, uh, IV, sorry, intravenous nitroglycerin, beta blockers and calcium antagonists can be used. However, nitroglycerin and calcium antagonists do, do have uh, tocolytic properties and may prolong labour. Um, MDT approach should be taken, individualised birth plans, communicating this with the women and all, uh, the, all and everyone involved in the care. Um, GP should be updated. Contraception in future pregnancies will um, will depend on underlying um, etiology and cardiac function. The risk factors for MI, uh, high parity, increasing maternal age, pre-existing hypertension, pre-existing diabetes, pre-existing ischemic heart disease, smoking, obesity, strong family history. Other risk factors, um, hyperlipidemia, preeclampsia, eclampsia, thrombophilia, migraine headaches, uh, postpartum infections and blood transfusions. Main causes of, of acute myocardial infarction in pregnancy, coronary atherosclerosis, non-atherosclerotic causes like coronary artery dissection, coronary artery thrombosis, coronary artery spasms. Drug induced like tibutaline, ergo, ergotamine, uh, bromocryptine and cocaine use. Diagnosis acute myocardial infarction, ST elevation, ST depression, symmetrical T wave inversion, newly developed Q waves, non uh, normal variations in pregnancy, 15 uh, to 20 degrees of left axis shift, ST segment depression, T wave inversion inferior and lateral leads, small Q wave and inverted T wave in lead 3, Q wave in lead um, AVF and um, inverted T waves in V1, V2 and occasionally V3. Um, estimated fetal and maternal uh, effective dose of diagnostic and interventional radiology procedures. So you have chest and radiograph is uh, less than 0 0.01, um, CT chest is 0 0.3, um, coronary angiography is 1.5, percutaneous coronary intervention is 3 um, uh, gray. So that's the, the unit for measuring the, um, the, the exposure of radiation. GY. Medical management of acute myocardial infarction pregnancy, um, low dose aspirin, nifedipine, labetalol, heparin, uh, clopidogrel can be limited if used, uh, statins are contraindicated, angiotensin uh, converting enzyme inhibitors, angiotensin receptor uh, blockers. Many thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, then don't forget to give the give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I hope this summary has been really useful for you and you really benefited and hope it can help with your revision of MRCOG exam.